Alrighty, what's up guys, single player Nacho here, and hold on to your human tissue, and your flesh, and your entire human population. These are the 10 viruses that have killed the most people in Resident Evil. All it takes is one little injection, that encasement of death. You shoot them up, and your skin starts bubbling, and your face is destroyed. You are a monster. Thanks a lot, Mr. Shady Shades Man. Oh, how much you've destroyed families. And I get it, it's fun shooting zombies in the face, repeatedly. But the last thing we think about is actual human death toll when we're playing Resident Evil. So how exactly deadly are these viruses? What are their symptoms? What are their effects? And how many people have they killed? Let's get to it. First up, we have the prototype virus, aka the Kid Killer, which has killed an estimated dozen children. Now, the prototype virus was largely used for Project W, an umbrella program that kidnapped children, took them back to the old umbrella lab, they gave them this prototype virus to see which one survived. The effects of the prototype virus increased metabolism. You're faster, stronger, and you can heal even after being brutalized by a tyrant. But that's if you survive the infection process. Unfortunately for these kids, their little bodies could not handle it. Unless you're Albert Wesker, who has just the right amount of sunglasses. DNA. Yes, this prototype virus is very selective in the host's genes. Next up, we have the G-Virus, aka the Gangster Virus, which has resulted in the deaths of approximately 100 plus people. And I'm looking at you, William Birkin, who killed a couple of dozen people when he infected himself with the G-Virus. But it's important to note where that G-Virus was implanted. William Birkin shot himself up in his arm. And that's why one of his arms are ginormously bigger than the other one. And maybe the most disgusting part of the G-Virus is that it grows a bunch of eyeballs for who knows why around the host's body. So you take into account William Birkin's kills, the G's in the sewers, which are filled with the G-Virus, and Lisa Trevor, who basically spawned the G-Virus in her body. It was taken from poor little Lisa's corpse, and you get about a hundred or so deaths. Next up, we have the A-Virus, AKA the Babacumba virus. I just made that up, I'm sorry. Now it's really hard to estimate the amount of deaths that the A-Virus has provided, but they definitely range in the hundreds, if not the thousands. You're looking at the Great Lake murders, which were about 14 casualties, the Institute of Biotechnology terror attack, which resulted in six casualties, and then the New York bioterrorist attack, and the A-Virus caused the deaths of at least a hundred or more. Now the A-Virus and the T-Virus are pretty similar, they both spawn zombies, except the A-Virus, also known as the animal virus makes the hosts a little bit more intelligent than their zombie counterparts. They can kind of talk and think about what they're doing before they eat your face off. And so that's what kind of made them a little bit more deadly. Sure, it wasn't as widespread as the T-virus, which is down the list, but what's scarier than a zombie talking about their day? <sighs> Zach. <gasps> Next up, we have the Ouroboros virus, AKA, I can't pronounce this, Uro Burritos. Now the U virus is said to harness amazing capability, superhuman superpowers. The thing is, it's only compatible with a very select few of people. Uh, for one, Albert Wesker, Neil Fisher, and Alex Wesker. So all of their kill counts, I'm talking Wesker's kill counts, maybe 80 plus. These goddamn people are psychopaths. Regardless, all this hype around the Uroboros virus is kind of unfounded. It turns out it's very sensitive to heat, and just so happens that Wesker's final moments are near a fucking volcano. It's hilarious. Next up, we have the mold, AKA not a virus, a bacteria. Now, of course, this should not be on the list at all, but the mystery around the connections, the company that made the mold, I think we're looking at something that's way more engineered than a simple fungi found on the floor in the Mushroom Kingdom. So the extraction of the mold, not the mold itself, has resulted in the deaths of at least a hundred people. Pretty much everyone that was on that ship that contained Evelyn E001, a couple of strays in the streets of Dolby, Louisiana, and of course, the Baker family, which is the saddest part of this all. Now, I personally think that the mold is one of the grossest transformations from any of these viruses. The entire host's skin, it's like black tar, and everything turns into sludge. 
that comes out of the victim's eyeballs, mouth, ears, any hole available. And it might be the infection that breaks the victim's mental state the most. Thanks to mind control and all these hallucinations that you will receive, it's pretty scary. Next up, we have the T-Abyss virus, aka smells of fish. And its kill count ranges in the thousands. For context, you have these large, large ships, the Queen Ditto, the Queen Semiramis, and the Queen Zenobia. All these ships carry about 2,000-ish people. Now, not all of them died, but it gives you a clear idea of how much the T-Abyss infected and killed. Here's the thing about the T-Abyss. Not only are its mutations very gross and aquatic, there's obviously a very fishy influence. It was also just way too chaotic for the black market. No one wanted to deal with this thing. You had the ooze, a B.O.W. that's very repulsive, or the Malakoda. These mutations were just too much, too powerful, and too destructive to be actually considered as weapons. And in turn, they killed a bunch of people. Next up, we have the T. Veronica virus, aka the incest virus. <laughs> I should delete my channel. Estimated kill count, just under 100. You have the Rockford Island incident, which the T. Veronica virus killed a bunch of prisoners, and the Antarctic outbreak, which killed another dozen or so. Now, the T. Veronica virus is actually based off of queen ants, believe it or not. How huge does that microscope need to be to be able to find a human killer in a tiny little ant? Well, these tiny little ants led to the deaths of many, many people, and it was the Ashford family who was basically responsible for all of it. And it's because of the queen ant origins that the mutations are very insectoid, like the Alexia pod or the Nosferatu, the Jabberwock S3. They're all very bug-like. It's all thanks to those queen ants. Next up, we have the T. Phobos virus, AKA the ghost virus. Estimated kill count, a thousand plus. Basically, all of the natives in same island were killed by the Phobos virus. Natives that wanted nothing to do with this virus had no stakes in its creation or the monetary gains that it would have provided to Alex Wesker and Albert Wesker. The T. Phobos is once again one of those superhuman viruses, which actually originated from that first prototype virus used in Project W. Now in Project W, the survivability rate was less than 0.5%. With the T. Phobos, unfortunately, the natives survived and they became the afflicted. Very zombie-like, mutilated corpses that still walk and are very hungry. Just the design alone makes you fear the T. Phobos. You don't want it anywhere near your orifices. Next up, we have the T-Virus, aka the daddy of all viruses. This virus inspired many of the viruses on this list and has killed an estimated tens of thousands of people. We're talking the Raccoon City outbreak and the following bombing of Raccoon City. It's also one of the most contagious viruses in Resident Evil. Through injection, by simply drinking water, the Arclay Dam actually had an outbreak of its own. Some people just drank some tap water and they got that T-virus and their flesh decomposed. Increased brain function made them very angry and zombies have no problem in beating the shit out of their family members, eating their brains. And this thing's also airborne. Can you believe that? So one little outbreak, and of course it makes sense to bomb the shit out of everything, make it ground zero. Not only is this thing responsible for the classic zombies, but those scary ass crimson heads and weirdly sexual liquors. Come on, you can't look at that and think about popsicles. I don't know, it's gross. Still pretty interesting that you would think that anything that has the T-virus is dead. You see the falling and rotting flesh off their faces and or booties, but the T-virus can't reanimate dead tissue. I wonder what would have happened if Raccoon City was left open during the outbreak for a year, everyone would just be walking skeletons. And last but not least, the C-Virus, AKA not the coronavirus. Okay, we're trying to keep it fictional here. The C-Virus death toll, over 100,000 plus. Now, because the C-Virus is largely a part of Resident Evil 6, it's also the culmination of various viruses from previous games, the G-Virus, the T-Veronica virus. Everything leads up to this point, a breaking point, and it's the end of the world type outbreak. The C-Virus makes typical zombie foes and Javos. If there's an enemy name that literally translates to devil, it's pretty bad. But unlike the T-Virus, Javos and C-Virus zombies are much more 
intelligent. This is what makes it ultimately more dangerous than its predecessors. And the mutations are just outright grotesque like the Obistvo. Look at this shit. What the hell, man? What am I supposed to do against this thing? It's just gonna tear me into pieces. Little nacho chips. And the sea virus raged in the streets of Tall Oaks, United States. Lanxiang in China. There were countless casualties. The utter scale of the sea virus outbreak is insane. And as I said before, it's the culmination of all this research, all this death-defying operation that led to this, to nearly the extinction of the human race. And that's what makes the sea virus one of the most deadliest viruses in Resident Evil. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Which one of these viruses would you least want in your body besides the, the famous one that's going on right now? Comment down below your thoughts and opinions and any recommendations for lore videos and countdowns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the merch and the second channel links in the description if you'd like to support the channel any further. Have an awesome rest of your day, guys. I appreciate all the support. And as always, stay single.